Uh, welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, July 22nd. I'd like to remind everybody to please turn off you know, all your electronic devices. Uh, and make sure you do not talk on your phones or text because it does interfere with our uh, communication devices. So if we could have a roll call please to establish quorum. Terry McClung. I'm here. Melissa Green. Here. Harry Meyer. Present. Vicki Schneider. Here. Susan Harmon. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. Yep, six. All right, we're staying in the center of the United States of America. And two of the Republic of British Sands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. All right, uh, first thing on the order, uh, it's, I'd like to open this up for a public hearing. To uh, for a request to vacate the alley east of Kimberly Alley. Uh, is there anybody here who would like to speak on this public hearing? I'm a neighbor. Okay, if you'd come up and please. I'm a neighbor of this property. My name is Laurie Crammond. And your address? 27 Nova Street. We have a piece of property that abuts this property, and I just want to be sure that any improvements that she makes to the property don't have any negative implications for our property, which is a ravine. So I'm a little concerned about the way she's planning to do her taking of Alamo and the way she's planning to do her driveway. I know that has nothing to do with you. Not Alamo. Oh, this is Kimberly. <laughs> Can we just... Yeah, to <laughs> it's okay. Can we just forget everything that you just said? Absolutely. <laughs> Does anybody here like to talk about the vacating the alley east of Kimberling Alley? All right, hearing none, then I declare the public hearing closed. Um, if we can get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Get a second? Second. All right. Motion been made and second. Uh, we've got to defer the item under new business, item number two, the ordinance for the animal law changes. Uh, that one is not complete yet, so Mr. Weaver will get us that when, we, when he gets it ready. And also I'd like to add uh, item number seven. Under new business is a resolution for the mayor to do business with the city. And that should for be in, or your, with? Is that in your packet. No, is, is that to do business for or with the city? With the city. Oh. For the city. Anybody else have anything? If not... All those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Get a motion to approve the minutes for July the 8th. So moved. Second. Any corrections, changes? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Under our commissions, uh, planning commission, we still have a vacancy. Uh, item position number three. And also the recommendation from the CAPC is to renew or re reappoint Greg Moon uh, as a CAPC member. I move that we approve the application for position three on the CAPC for Greg Moon. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of Greg Moon being reappointed to position three, saying five saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, public comments, three minutes. For, and we have no public comments. Are we oh sure? God. We can go <laughs> home. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she can now make her public she comments. <laughs> uh, all right, um, under item uh, new business, item number one, motion to discuss the ordinance <coughs> of aggregate and sidewalk. So I'll move. Second. All right. 
I think we have uh, ordinance there for repair. Uh, and actually, I think what this is is uh, adding the <coughs> section of allowing aggregate concrete uh, into the uh, ordinance. Mr. McClellan? Uh, yeah, I, I hope everybody's had a chance to read through it. It's pretty brief, and it's uh, not a whole lot to it. Um, uh, so I would like to go ahead and make a motion that we uh, assign this ordinance a number and uh, read it. Second. For first. It was on his first reading. First. Okay, Mr. McClung made a motion to sign a number and read it for the first meeting. And Ms. Snyder? Mm -hmm. Right. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's so moved. The ordinance number will be 2290. Excuse me, 2280. An ordinance amending Title 9.08 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code with regard to construction, replacement, and repair of sidewalks for public use. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to provide for a more economical way to address sidewalk construction, repair, and replacement. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Chapter 9.08 of the Municipal Code be amended as follows. Section 1, the following subsection shall be added as follows. 9.08.04A1C, aggregate concrete that matches existing adjoining sidewalks in color and texture as closely as possible. If there is no adjoining sidewalk, if there are no adjoining sidewalks to match, the new aggregate should be of close texture with the tinted gray palette preferred. Aggregate sidewalks must follow the concrete specifications set forth in 9.08.06 construction. 9.08.04A1D, other colors, material, or artistic treatment may be approved by the Eureka Springs Historic District Commission. Must. Must be. Thank you. <laughs> Section 2. The following phrase shall be added at the end of subsection 9.08.04A2 as a part of the sentence already there as follows. Quote, or aggregate concrete as described in 9.08.04A1. End quote. Section 3, all provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs not in conflict <coughs> with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Section 4, severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part or provision thereof other than the parts so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. Mr. McClung? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to approve ordinance number 2280 on its first reading. Second. Second. Mr. McClung, <laughs> made a motion and Melissa Green second. Discussion? All those in favor, sing five saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Fine. Okay, that uh, brings us up to our next uh, item is uh, Ordinance for food trucks at special events. Ms. Green, Ms. Snyder. It says postponed. postponed. It, it says postponed. Uh, we're still on workshops on that. I'm sorry. On both of those items. Uh, item three. Uh, I would like to see if the council at the workshop we talked about item number four. Uh, Omitting that, does the council still want to omit that, or 
Mr. Thomas? Well, I was just going to bring up the fact that what we discussed at the workshop would have to be voted on here because we can't make, we couldn't make any decisions at the workshop. Well, it's, it's deferred till item number three, but item number four is what I'm bringing up to the council mm -hmm. because we made a decision that we did not want to talk about, did not want to have that included. So I'm asking the council to, for a motion to, dis to discuss that. To, dis this oh, to discuss the deleting of? Item number four. Item number okay. three is still being deferred. Right. Well, I'll make a motion that we discuss number four for a final decision. I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Thomas, did you? Well, I believe that at the workshop, the, the uh, council came to a consensus on the fact that we should do a survey of restaurant owners in town. And, uh, you know, if well, that's true. It's number three. And that's for number three. That's number three, though. Number four is the structure. Oh, oh, okay. I thought number four we had came to come to a consensus that we just didn't want to deal with that. But it's on the agenda, right. so I'm asking for the council. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I. That's what I kind of started out saying. And it was. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still. Uh huh. Okay. So we, we need okay. to remove consideration of this ordinance. Remove, make the motion to remove consideration of this ordinance. I already did. No, you no, made to, just made discuss, motion okay, to, discuss. to discuss the final decision. Okay, and he. Okay, we got a motion. I'll second it. All right, got a motion and second. Don't I have to get rid of my motion and second then? No. No. Ms. Harmon? I just want to just recap what we did talk about, just so I'm clear on what, why we're doing it. It was because we felt that because these lottery locations were privately owned, they could decide to do whatever they wanted to and would have to go through the approval process as that private landowner to the various parties that are required by code, correct? Yes. During special events? No, no this is permanent oh, structures permanent at structure. food truck lottery sites. Now the permanent structure has nothing to do with what you're talking about. Permanent structures which talking about moving and, and building permanent decks. I know, but it's all on private property, right? She's right. Yeah, okay, you're right. Okay, you're correct. I'm sorry. So if it's all on private property, what our discussion was is that they, if they wanted to do something, regardless of whether or not it was the food truck or the private property owner, the private property owner would be required to go through the process via code to get those approvals. Makes sense. And in essence, they can do whatever they want on private property. Within code, correct. The property owner could, yes. Okay. So, okay. based on that, I'm okay with removing it. Okay, any further discussion? No. All right, all those in favor of removing this, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So moved. I make, want to make an inquiry, yes, sir, uh, and I apologize, the gentleman that was here to look at the vacating the alley was saying goodbye to me as he left and I may have missed something here. Number three was postponed tonight at this table? Yes. Okay. It's my understanding that at the workshop with regards to number three, we, we came to a consensus that we would do a survey of restaurants. But we couldn't vote on that at the workshop, so if we want to do the survey, we have to vote on it here at this table. Why? My understanding, Mr. Thomas, uh -huh. is that the administration was going to do the survey. If the administration done the survey, there's no need for this council to vote on anything. Oh, I thought the council came to a consensus that the council wanted a survey. And, I, and you would do it, of course, but the council wanted it. There's, that's no... Yeah. I may be mistaken. Is that an action of the council we need to bring up at this table, Mr. Weaver? No, I'm here. If council trusts the executive branch to do the survey, it doesn't have to order it done if you're going to volunteer to do it. If it believes that the it possesses the power to force you to and doesn't think you're going to follow through with it as the executive, then they would have to take a vote. So a vote is unnecessary if they trust that it will be done. And a vote is then only necessary if they don't think it will be done 
and they think they have the power, which I would say there's a debatable point there. Okay, I'm going to back up. Mr. Thomas, I think I'm, I'm misunderstanding what your, your question is. And I, okay, I would like to back up on this item number three and open it up for discussion. Okay. okay. I regret that the lawyer has framed it in terms of if you want to take a vote on this, it's because you don't trust the mayor to do his job and you want to try to force him to do his job. That's not my point at all. My point is at the last meeting we said we were going to have a workshop. We had a workshop and council, I thought, came to a consensus. We had a long discussion and we finally decided that we wanted to have a survey done. But you can't decide that at a workshop because you can't make a decision at a workshop. The decision has to be made during the meeting. And that's, so I don't really care at this point, but I want you to understand completely that I am in no way attending, attempting to force the mayor to do anything. I am no way claiming that he wouldn't do it. I am simply trying to get council to do the job that I think council is supposed to do. Thank you. Ms. Herman. I think at this point, I mean, my understanding of it was that we were postponing this particular item um, until we had more information, whether or not that's a survey, whether or not that's a, um, a walk, you know, around to different businesses and whatnot. I think, and, and I know we all think differently, so, you know, I may have thought of it a different way than Bob did or that, uh, that, that uh, Melissa did or whatever, but until we have that extra information, in whatever form it comes to us, we're relying on the mayor to provide that to us, um, then we wait until that information is put together. But I wouldn't think we'd have to vote on anything either. I think it's just a, you know, we're waiting for additional information in order to complete the discussion. Um, most of the time, when it's something like this, there's no reason that <laughs> the mayor wouldn't do contact or you know send out stuff to the restaurants so because it, it behooves the city. Uh, we don't have to vote on everything um, when it's something other than just getting stuff rolling. Like we still have to pick people for the committee and stuff. Um, that's when we have to sit there and make stuff. Otherwise, we all just agreed this is going to get done. And, yeah, I think this is postponed until we get all of our information back from the committee. I think we're putting it off until we get all that. So it's going to be a little while, but I think this is going to be great, and I think the people in the town are going to be really, really happy that we're doing this. I have a question for the council. I think part of my... And when talking about this, and, and Ms. Harmon was, was correct, and, and now my memories, unfortunately, and I apologize to the council, I think I um, would like to a little bit have a little bit more definition from the council on what exactly they would like to have on their survey. Uh, I think I heard one <coughs> uh, council member say something about, do you want, or were you willing to serve uh, for example, hot dogs or something. Are you going to be open? And then the other one is, are you going to be open to past 9 o'clock? And then the other one was, uh, or simple yes or no, are you in favor of food trucks uh, having uh, at special events? I think all three of those are fine, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Ms. Harmon? Well, don't, I mean, I, I thought that we, I think, I thought when we talked about food trucks, we talked about how there's a hundred foot rule and, and, and so some of those things would apply to this, to a special event. And they wouldn't be negated just because we're having a special event, right? So maybe we just need to do, do a little bit of a homework so that when you do send the survey out, they understand what they can and cannot do. Um, and then phrase your questions around that. So we know that there's a 100-foot rule, right? Of a, 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 I thought that we did. That's that true. there was a 100-foot rule of a brick-and-mortar restaurant or whatever it is. And then I thought that um, 
there were some restrictions on the sidewalk space. Yes? Because some of the sidewalks are narrow, we've got to have we've got to have maybe some provisions there that they understand. If they were to do this, then they would have to make sure that the whole sidewalk wasn't blocked. Is that correct? I, I thought we had that. There was a slight discussion about that, the just for safety or or whatever. If you're going to have that many <coughs> people downtown, Mr. Mayor, if I may clarify right there, what she's talking about if if the current restaurateurs uh, decided to. Right. Sell food out the door. I mean, they yeah. can't. They can't block the sidewalk. So, I mean, they really can't do that. So, not as such. So, I'm just saying I wouldn't want to send a survey out unless you were very clear as to number one, what you're asking and what they're able to do if they wanted to buy into the situation. So, Ms. Schneider. Um, my understanding was we were going to send out a general questionnaire, so to speak, to the restaurant owners in town in regards to, because of the situation last year of 4,000 people and not enough food or time or opening, were they interested in or able to provide? I think we need to give them as much info as we can into why this is even going out, which is do you want to try to include extra food and time and hours? Would you rather have it where um, we had somebody that was going to collect food you know, and, and put it down here at a buffet type thing? We had all these different things that came up. So we need to have an informational questionnaire go out to them how would you like to deal this is the situation we have a zillion people coming can only feed half a zillion how do you want to deal um, that's basically what we need to do with them let them know what the problem is give them some ideas of what we've thought about do they like any of them or have they come up with some other ones Mr. Thomas this is kind of a reason why you bring something to the table and you discuss it and then you vote on it because what we're doing tonight right here is holding the workshop again just discussing and discussing and discussing and then you're supposed to make a decision at the council table Ms. Green? I thought we were just going to ask them if they would be amendable to having food trucks for special events they're pretty aware of all the ordinances and what they can and can't do. I think it was a question to ask how they felt about having food trucks. I didn't think it was going to be a whole long thing for them. Ms. Green? I mean, Ms. Snyder? Uh, food trucks is just one of their options. And we really need to look into the 100 foot rule because I'm pretty sure that that was turned down because there's not a restaurant out here that's more than 100 feet from another restaurant. And if we say the restaurants can be next door to each other, but food trucks can't, we have a problem. But anyway, special events also can call for special leniencies. But yeah, food trucks is one of the options that should be in that um, questionnaire. The idea is trying to feed the people for the special events. Uh, and with the idea of trying to give the brick and mortar, mortar people the first opportunity, you know, if they think they can rise to the occasion and do it, then, you know, we certainly should give them the opportunity to do so. Uh, if, if they don't feel that they can, then, then if we, you know, we need alternative food sources, that would be food trucks. So, I mean, the three questions that you mentioned at the very beginning were sufficient. You know, first off, you know, are they willing to? If not, then, you know, this is what the other options are. You know, how do they feel about that? So, it's pretty simple. Mr. Thomas? I'd like to make a motion to ask the mayor to please, at his convenience, whenever he desires to, develop a questionnaire and bring it based on what he's heard tonight and bring it back to the table for us to look at whenever he's ready. I second. Okay. Motion been said. Second. Any, any additional conversation? All right. 
Not all those in favor saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. That brings us up to, I think, item number five, uh, discussion council meeting at the auditorium. Mr. Green, Mr. Thomas. Yes, ma'am. What is... You want um, a motion to discuss? Oh, I'll make a motion to discuss the meeting place at the auditorium. Okay. Can you get a second? I'll second it. All right. Um, Butch, what is the status? In um, 2017, the city council voted to put the meeting place here. We've also voted on an elevator, and we really can't use the gym downstairs no matter what we do with it because of the ADA because you, you can't get down to it. Have, or is there a way down? I don't know anything about 2017. Last year, was it was it 2000? Put in an elevator. Uh, I have plans drawn up and apply for a grant. We didn't mm -hmm. get the grant. Uh, I've instructed the architect to, on basis on what the, what I understood the council wanted to go ahead and proceed with the drawings to put out for bids the elevator and bathrooms. Okay. Uh, for the downstairs. Okay, so we we're still in that. The architect and I'll be seeing him, meeting with him oh, okay. next week, and I'll have a better idea. And once we get he gets the plans, and he'll come up and present it to the council. Okay, and thank. And I get approval for it then to go out for bids. Okay, um, thank you. That's all I wanted. Anybody else? Anything else, Mr. McClellan? Yeah, in conjunction with that, it's it's uh, indirectly related is the uh, <coughs> North Street property. Uh, what? That's going up for bids, although that's not part of it. Uh, that's going to be bidding uh, into this month. Okay, that it's not, but but then we kind of looking at that to be our avenue. Of, uh, uh, that's yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. Partial funding. All right. Any further? No. Nope. Right. Okay. Thank, thank you, Butch. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think but I, I think we need to proceed with the. With the access to downstairs with for ADA, because if we're going to use it for anything, we we'll, we'll have to provide that type of access. Well, we're in the process, and, and I will so, find out probably next week. Uh, I'll be meeting with the architect and okay. find out what the status is. Very good. Um, all right, nothing else. Get a motion to discuss uh, ordinance to vacate the alley east of Kimberling Alley. I move that we discuss the ordinance to vacate the alley east of Kimberlyn Alley. Second. All right. Uh, we should have in your package uh, an ordinance uh, vacating the alley between Block 19 and Block 18, Clayton Survey, which is down on uh, Kimberlyn yet. Mr. McClellan? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we... Uh, Assign this ordinance a number and and read it for the first reading. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, saying five and saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The ordinance number will be 2281, an ordinance vacating an alley between Block 19 and Block 18 in the Clayton Survey. Whereas the City Council of Eureka Springs, Arkansas has reviewed the petition of the adjoining landowner to vacate the area defined by the following legal description. An open alley running east and west between lot 38 and block 19 and lot 6 and block 18 Clayton Survey. And whereas section 14-54-1042 of the Arkansas Code Annotated allows the City Council to vacate certain streets. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, that Section 1, the section described above is hereby vacated, entitled is hereby vested in fee simple to the adjoining landowner. All ordinances and parts of ordinances in conflict with this ordinance are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict. Section 3, that in the event that any section paragraph subdivision Clause phrase, other provision or portion of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid or unconstitutional. The same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance code, code section, or chapter as a whole, or any part or provision other than the part so decided to be invalid or unconstitutional, and the remaining provisions of this ordinance code, code section, or chapter shall remain in effect. 
right. Need a motion to approve, Mr. Fund? I'd like to make a motion that we approve uh, ordinance 2281 on this first reading. All right. A motion and second. Any discussion? All second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. <coughs> Uh, that brings us up to the item number seven. Uh, in your packet there, there's a resolution that would allow me to basically act as an architect. Uh, and this is on the old fire station over there for this grant that we had put in. Uh, they are wanting the uh, state uh, with the US USDA Rural Development um uh, Basically, is wanting to know, get approval from the council that uh, it's okay for me to do the work, and this will be a unpaid job. The vet's got. Okay, I I move to assign the resolution a number and read it. Second. All right. Discussion. Yes, ma'am. Um, the key word is unpaid. Yes, because of our city laws. I was very glad to hear you say that. Thank you. <laughs> Although I can be paid, and sometimes I have been paid before, I'm sure you did. After the big battle that we had with I Charlotte Park, Buchanan? Parks with, uh, I did a job with Parks oh. when I first came on. I don't know. So, anyway. <laughs> as long as it counts as approved. Basically, no, this is an unpaid. <laughs> yeah, unpaid. I like that word. All right, any further discussion? All right. I guess vote. We need a, is a roll call or? Uh, oh, that's a good point. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Ms. Harmon. Yes. Mr. McClung. Yes. Ms. Green. Yes. Ms. Snyder. Yes. Six, zero. The resolution number will be 757, a resolution providing for the employment of mayor to do business with the city of Eureka Springs while serving as mayor. Whereas the city council of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, has made a comprehensive study and review of the laws governing limitations of a mayor being employed by or receiving other value from the city while serving as mayor and... Whereas the current mayor has experience with providing goods and or services to the city and its commissions prior to its election and whereas in the opinion of the city council, the mayor was elected by the electorate with full disclosure of his past relationship with the city and the city's commissions. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that section one, the current mayor of the city of Eureka Springs is hereby specifically authorized to do business of the same nature as his prior experience with the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas and its commissions, including but not limited to architectural services through the remainder of his current term as mayor. Section 2. Said services shall be made on a volunteer basis without direct financial payment to the mayor other than his normal salary as mayor. Section 3, repeal clause. All ordinances, resolutions, and parts thereof in conflict herewith are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict. All right, that uh, brings us to our agenda setting. Do we have anything? All right, hearing none. Uh, city Council comments. Mr. Thomas? I was not trying to force you to do anything. I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. <laughs> that's it. That's all yeah, I said. Yeah. <laughs> Ms. Green? Nice it cooled off. <laughs> Ms. Snyder? Okay, time for my annual report and update on the Eureka. And this was our ninth year. We have very special shirts for that, too. They are gorgeous. 94% um, of the participants were out of our area. So that's how many outsiders we bring in for this thing. 
We had been up on pre-registration by 40%. Due to the heat wave, it dropped to 20%. We had several, obviously, cancellations. But considering that New York totally canceled their whole thing, I thought we did pretty good. Our oldest contender was 79. Our youngest was 11. We had 225 first-timers. That's how well-known we are becoming. This is unbelievable. Um, on the ages 50-plus and older, 177. Yeah. <laughs> 49 and younger, 237. That is only a 60-person difference. Yes, okay. Foreign countries, this year we only had three. I think that was down from four or five last year. <laughs> South Africa came to compete, Mexico and Scotland. And I want to talk about the Scotland people because it was two Scottish guys and family. Their sister had moved to Houston. They were going to come visit. They decided to check out what was interesting and going on, saw the race thing. They scheduled their whole vacation, their whole trip around the Eureka and for contenders. It was incredible. And then the sister and everybody that she was with in Houston all came up here too. So we had a whole pile of people. That's how well known we are. It's, it's really, really good. Um, we had 13 American states that competed, and they came as far away as Florida and Oregon. Let's see. 414 competitors. 74 of them were what we're now calling the full Eureka. Now, the full Eureka is when on Friday you do the triathlon. On Saturday, yes, in July and in August, you ride a hundred miles on your bicycle. We have changed the route to include Rock House Road. Have you all been down Rock House Road or tried to get up it? Um, we also, that's the 100 run and the 10K run on Sunday. We have new this year what we're calling the Half Eureka. And that's all the same except you, run, you ride 62 miles instead of the 100. Uh, we only had, because it's brand new, we only had 16 people there. We had 57 people do the triathlon, 155 people that just did the bikes, any part of the bike race they wanted, and 112 runners. Now, the big thing was, these people are coming back. They're bringing their other athlete friends. They're bringing their families. It has been increasing year by year. We are extremely well known as the top competition in regard to challenges. Nobody has mountains like we do. Absolutely nobody. So it has turned out to be incredibly good with all these people that they bring. It's been unreal. In view of the heat that happened this weekend, we had one person that after making it better, we sent over to the hospital anyway to check. After he finished the race, he got a really bad leg cramp. We actually had like a big old kettle thingy that's filled with water that you throw people in to cool him down. And the muscle actually relaxed and was fine, but we, just to be safe, sent him over to the hospital. One person out of three days, out of how many contenders? Um, anyway, yes, out of 414, one. So even though it is July and it was an incredibly hot July, we did good. And the people, they just absolutely love it. We did have one person I found out from the hospital yesterday that did go over on their own for a muscle cramp, and that was it. Now, last year I was really, really excited to be able to announce that the overall winner for the Eureka, which included the 100-miler, was a woman. This year, two women. Yes! We have 
show enough and show them what we can do. A woman won the half Eurekan and a woman won the full Eurekan. Sorry, boys, but we're showing our stuff. That's our wrap up for this year. <laughs> All right. Anything else? That's it. Oh, for me? Nope. That's that's more than enough. That's fine. Miss Meyer. I saw six of those bicycle guys eat eight large pizzas. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> Is that your Mitch McLean? I just want to actually, uh, I hate doing this, but I just want to thank the mayor for volunteering his time and his expertise to the firehouse and doing that. God, I hate doing that. For <laughs> but you got to give credit where credit's due. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you pay? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, events coming up. Uh, we got quite a few coming up in the next couple of weeks. we got uh, 27th this weekend, the drumming in the park from 6 to 8 in the Basin Park. Uh, also, the auditorium uh, that evening, 7 p.m., Saturday the 27th, Arkansas Music, Music Works Brass Band, which is the 2018 Grand Champion U.S. Open Brass Band. It's a free concert, so it, this will be incredible. Uh, August 2nd through the 4th is August Diversity Weekend, and with August the 2nd, uh, that evening, Gospel of the Eureka doors will be open at 7.30 p.m. here at the auditorium, again free. This will be the uh, film, full-length feature film uh, on us basically doing Ordinance 2223. So August also on that same weekend will be, oh, yards and yards and yards of yard sales. Uh, so this is going to be a real busy weekend. What's the date for that? Second and the third of August, and at on the third uh, Saturday, Jimmy James will be at the Odd at 8:30, and then the following weekend is one of my favorite weekends, the Bluegrass Blast, uh, from three o'clock to 7:30 in the after, in the evening, down at the Basin Park. They'll have bluegrass music with Casey and the Boys, Old Salt, Un Old Salt Union. And the poor Ramblin' Boys. This will be a great concert. It's always filled, so bring your chairs and come down and enjoy. And then on the 9th will be Aught at the Odd, uh, featuring Moulton mo Modeling uh, here at the auditorium, the lower level. Doors will be open at 8 p.m. And then on the 10th will be the second gallery stroll, 6 to 9 on downtown galleries. And that concludes the comments. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And so move. Aye. 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 Aye.